This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. A former teacher at Freeburg High School who left a student for dead is now out of prison early and a free man. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. I'm Kelly Jackson. The case in St. Clair County made national headlines when it happened. Today, Five on Your Side's Megan Kernan spoke exclusively with the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department about this week's developments. Megan. Kelly, as of Monday, Sam Shelton is now out on parole. He was released early from the Illinois River Correctional Center after serving nearly 17 years of his 20 year prison sentence. Tonight, we hear from the Sheriff's Department that made the astonishing discovery, which caught the attention from people all over the world. This was initially reported as a missing persons case. Uh, it then kind of spiraled. 18 years ago, a former Freeburg High School teacher tried to murder a then 17 year old girl. That he uh, strangled her uh, using a belt and broke her neck. Sam Shelton left the victim barely alive in the woods at Citizens Park in Belleville. She was missing for 30 hours. The St. Clair County Sheriff's Department sprung into action. Sergeant James Hendricks says the department's former investigator, Steve Johnson, who's now Fairview Heights Police Chief, was very successful in the interrogation room. And ultimately, uh, Mr. Sheldon confessing that he believed that he had killed her and that he had left her body in the woods. Shelton led police to the woods to find her body. When our guys came out, they believed that they were doing a, a recovery mission to recover her body. But that's not what they found. Johnson made the astonishing discovery after searching for 24 hours. Officers found her alive in the dark woods. Once they um, recalled seeing her body, and that's all on video, uh, you can recall them shouting, saying she's still breathing, um, and, and get medics in here, you know, to get her some help. The former Freeburg High School teacher pleaded guilty in 2007 to the attempted murder of Ashley Reeves. Now that Shelton is a free man. We hope that he's been successfully rehabilitated and that he'll become a productive citizen. I spoke with Ashley on the phone, who said she's hoping to move on and forget about the past. She's got, you know, emotional scars that'll last for the rest of her life, and she just wants to kind of move on. Shelton will now serve three years of supervised par parole with the state. The victim survived and underwent rehab to relearn how to swallow, talk, and walk. Day three of the Thomas Kenworthy trial is wrapping up right now in downtown St. Louis. Today, jurors learn what his ex-wife told negotiators during a standoff. Kenworthy is on trial, accused of murdering St. Louis police officer Tamaris Bohannon in August of 2020. Today, Sergeant Brian Hayes took the stand. He was at the scene in Tower Grove South and spoke with Kenworthy's ex-wife during the standoff. She told him to avoid conversations about his parents, but also said Kenworthy enjoyed fishing and praying with his daughter. Kenworthy, who was charged with first degree murder, has pleaded not guilty due to mental defect. Now an update to a story on our I, that our I team has been following for several years. An FBI investigation has ruled a young black man found shot to death at a Missouri home died by suicide. Durante Martin was at a prom party in Fredericktown in 2021 when he died. It was initially ruled a suicide, but his family insisted it was murder. A jury in a coroner's inquest also determined he died by violence. Investigators say the owner of the home where he died had a history of racist social media posts. The FBI St. Louis Division says after an extensive investigation, it found Martin's death was a suicide, not a homicide or hate crime. The investigation shows Martin had meth in his body, which may have made him paranoid. There was also a witness to the suicide. Tonight, St. Louis police are searching for a man who broke into a woman's apartment and shot her. It happened around 7 this morning on South Spring Avenue in Dutchtown. Police say the suspect broke out a window and started demanding money from the victim. Then he shot her and ran off. The victim is in critical condition. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. Tonight, an 18-year-old faces dozens of charges for break-ins and burglaries around the St. Louis area. Police say Leslie James III was driving a stolen Hyundai with two passengers. They're accused of breaking into nine different businesses earlier this month and stealing money. That includes Big Daddy's, 1860 Saloon, Molly's, and Bogart's Smokehouse in Soulard. According to court documents, the suspect was wearing a GPS bracelet tying him to the crimes. Crews believe lightning sparked a huge fire at a home in St. Charles County. The home caught fire in New Melly yesterday afternoon. It's on Morrison Lane. Investigators say the chimney exploded and bricks were in the front yard. That leads them to believe the fire was caused by lightning. 
No one was in the home at the time. Firefighters were able to rescue a dog who got trapped when the ceiling collapsed. Well, it's dry and pleasant right now, but our weather first team is tracking some severe weather chances. Let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo. Yes, our first uh, and our next chance of severe weather will be Friday. So that's a weather alert day. Also, we're watching late Saturday night, early Sunday and then Sunday later in the afternoon and evening. It's beautiful now. A little bit cool in Flora in the 50s, but St. Louis 65 and that humidity at 50 50 percent. Uh, so the severe weather outlook for Thursday, it's to our west, Wichita to Dallas. All right, so it's way to the west of us, but we do have a chance of seeing a shower or thunder shower in here later in the day, and it looks more south and west of the metro. So then we are watching Friday, and you see that batch of showers and storms through Friday morning. Also watching Friday late in the evening and into the overnight hours for that risk of seeing some high wind, hail, and even we can't rule out tornadoes. Same thing on Sunday. I'll have much more on this weekend forecast and the stormy forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Jim, and you can find the latest on this weekend severe weather thread online. For a link, just text the word weather to 314-425-5355. With the beautiful weather we've experienced the last several weeks, more people on both sides of the by state are heading outdoors. However, experts are warning that there may be dangerous disease-carrying bugs hiding just out of sight. Five on your side, Holden Kerwicki reports on the rise of ticks. Mike, it's no secret. I love spending time outdoors. But after spending just an hour in the woods looking for morel mushrooms recently, I found seven ticks on my body. So I reached out to the experts at the Missouri Department of Conservation, and they told me that situations like this aren't uncommon. According to Deb Hudman with the Missouri Department of Conservation, there are four common types of ticks in Missouri, but as the world around us starts to warm up, they're seeing an increase of invasive Gulf Coast ticks south of the Missouri River and have detected Asian longhorn ticks in four Missouri counties. A recent study found that around 10% of ticks carry diseases such as Lyme disease, Ehrlichia, and even Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. And Dr. Rob Poirier, clinical chief of emergency medicine at Barnes Jewish Hospital, says the symptoms might not manifest themselves right away. The symptoms people have can occur anywhere from two days to two weeks later. Rash is the most common, but then there are more serious symptoms like fever, chills, headaches. Um, uh, people will get uh, have an altered mental status. They're not acting right. Some people can even be paralyzed eventually from the illness. Coming up at six, hear from the experts about what you can do to keep ticks out of your yard and more importantly, off your body. Reporting in O'Fallon, Illinois, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. The Supreme Court takes up another abortion case, why the government argues Idaho's ban is against federal law. New rules for airlines find out when they will have to pay you for problems at the airport. It's about to get loud in Illinois. Tonight we explain why cicadas make all that noise. It's back on track. You'll start to see the Del Mar Loop trolley starting tomorrow. Everything you need to know about riding and how it impacts the economy. That story Thursday morning on Today in St. Louis starting at 4 a.m.